Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next edition of the webinar series where we continue talking with author and sales extraordinaire, um, Mr. Chip Helm from uh, Hook Medical. Uh, in the earlier webinar, uh, Chip had talked about his philosophy, about his career, about a job in sales, uh, but now he's going to tell you how to actually put it into action. So, Chip, once again, thank you for taking the time to talk to our author. Uh, to our, uh, thank audience. you for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. Enjoy. Absolutely. And I think one of the things I want to also point out is the fact that uh, while you have one book, there's also another book this time we'll be talking about. This is talking about bigger than sales. And essentially you talk about how humility can help you shape and build relationships. So I'm really curious to see what you have to say about uh, humility and relationships because humility is not something that you usually associate with sales. So I'm very curious to actually hear your thoughts on this. But actually, before we get to that, I want to actually uh, talk about your forward where you talk about find your passion. It has a very similar ring to one of the chapters in your other book where you start talking about the fact that you've never held a job in your life. Can you elaborate a little bit more about how finding a passion is linked to the fact that you've never worked a day in your life, as you put it? Yeah. Well, first of all, they did a study sometime a couple of years ago, and they found out that most people don't have any passions. And I've been fortunate to have three passions, my family, my home in northern Michigan, and, you know, what do I do for a living, you know, and I, and I think that's important. Again, family, my home in northern Michigan, and then what I do for a living and work for a medical company. And, and just a side note to that, I think it's really important, because I was asked this question the other day, how did you pick your profession? Of uh, what type of sales, and I have to do something that impacts mankind, that it, that infects people, and and what we sell and what we do can actually, you know, give people longer lives and and help people and who are very very sick. So that I think that's really important when you find your passion and you never had a job in your life, when you fall in love, you fall in love because it's something that impacts your soul and is inside you. And so I had to do something that impacted mankind. So that's kind of what happened. And then I've been fortunate to have those passions and, you know, I fell in love, you know, and, and my, and my job, it never, what never has ever been a job. And so it made me so passionate. And when I say one of my chipisms, I say, if you're so passionate about something, you won't let yourself fail. Say that again. If you're so passionate about something, you won't let yourself fail. So that's kind of where I go with the passion. Absolutely. And I think that's something that is, is, is something that a lot of young people can definitely learn from the fact that you find your passion and the passion happens to be the job that you work for. It can be a wonderful, wonderful marriage if you could if you could call that but i think one of the things of course is that when you have your passion it's also about letting other people know about your passion as well and that is actually one of the things that you have in your book where you talk about the first chapter in this book is about communication right so how important is it for you if you're passionate about something is you should be able to also communicate this to the people around you so that they know what drives you so what would your advice be to a, a lot of young people out there about communication well, first of all, you've got to get back to communication. Yeah. You have to talk more. You have to be verbal. You know, when it's all said and done and the dust clears, people are, want, are going to want to see you, talk to you, look at your eyes, look at your expressions, look at your body language. That's who they want to work with. That's who they want to hire. That's who they want to spend time with. So I think that's the big thing on this is that you got to get back to that type of verbal communication. That will always be there. Was there 30 years ago? It will be there 30 years from now. Yes, we're good with texting and emails and Instagram and Twitter and all these great social media things and ways to communicate, but nothing will ever replace that face-to-face, -face, that verbal communication, that one-on-one -on -one that's, that's finding out about who you are and they want to find out who you are also. Indeed. But the, the fact is that when, when you think of salespeople communicating, always you assume is that they're going to communicate about well, how great they are, how great their products are, and you get a feeling that they're just trumpeting themselves. But one of the things you've mentioned in your book is that it's great to communicate well, but it's not about just communicating about yourself. It's also about trying to help the customers and trying to fulfill their needs. And you talk about humility. So, so yes, 
I need to be communicating effectively, but at what point do I need to make sure that whatever I communicate, I come across as being humble? And why is humility important in your opinion for a salesperson? Well, first of all, you've got to figure out the customer, they don't have to figure you out. So that's where you have to start. You have to figure that customer out, they don't have to figure you out. You know, number two is you want to treat people like you want to be treated. So it's called servant leadership. One thing that's looked at is called servant leadership. Worry about someone else's needs, okay? Treat people with kindness. Speak softly. It's not what you say to people, it's how you say things to people. Go through that process in your mind. I call it soft skills. How do you develop your soft skills? That's humility. That's the humility and the humbleness that comes out of you when you treat people with kindness, when you, you know, use soft words, when you are more empathetic and sympathetic for people, when you make tough decisions, but you can make those decisions and still do it with kindness, with a good heart and good intent. So I think that's the process of humility. Not everyone, are, not everyone that I know is, is very humble. I think we need more leaders that have lead with humility in this country and i think that's what the message i'm trying to get everything you do everything you do any way you communicate with someone you do it with that humility aspect that caringness you if you worry about somebody else more than you worry about yourself you will win which is actually tied into the next part so you talk about with all the people you need to be humble but isn't it important as well as that you need to use this humility when you're networking out there and how important do you think is networking for any individual? I mean, one of the things I like about this book, and it's also in the title of the book, is Bigger Than Sales. So everything that you're talking about is not just applicable to sales professionals, but for any professional out there. So it is about finding a passion. It's about communicating well. It's about being humble. But all of this is not necessarily going to be helping you if you do not network well. So essentially, explain to the, me and the audience why you think networking is important and can humility help you while you network? Well, first of all, networking is not rocket science. Okay, it's a very simple process. Put your hand out, say hello, you have a firm handshake, you look people directly in the eye, you comfort them, you put your hand out over their shoulder maybe, and you say hello. You have to get out of your comfort zone, that's the first thing. There's no way you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be successful if you don't network, if you don't go out and meet people. If you don't introduce yourself to people, if you don't do your research before you go somewhere, I always do my homework. I tell me I do my homework. I know who my audience is. And when I get done speaking to people and talking to people and making them feel good about themselves, then I will actually use what I call this book I have and I'll write their names down and I'll write a couple of things about each of these folks and I'll maybe put a picture, a name to a face so that I can remember them. That's the best way to remember people. People love to talk about themselves. People love to talk about themselves. And when you can get somebody to talk about themselves and tell you about themselves, you got them. You got that loyalty. You got that trust. It'll, it'll be a bond that will probably never be broken when you get people to talk about themselves. Because people love to talk about themselves. And that's the humility. You sit back, you listen, you observe, and you talk less. Which is interesting because the more you do that, you have the next chapter just talking about building a personal brand. And I, I really like this because it kind of ties back to one of the chapters in your previous book, which is perception is reality. So essentially the idea is that if that is the case, we may as well, if, if this is how people see us, I think we should go about building our brand in that way by which people perceive us. So some of your thoughts on this, Chip? Yeah, yeah. So as you say that, I just read an article this morning in USA Today, and they asked somebody, you know, what's the, what's the biggest things they learned over the last 30 years of their life and what they're doing in their career. And they're very famous and, oh, gosh, they're making money hands over foot. Okay, here's what they said. Self-awareness, self-awareness, self-awareness. And that's what building your brand is. And that's what be careful about perception is reality. You've got to know your environment. You've got to know your, your audience around you. I always teach people, observe, watch, listen, and talk less. But self-awareness, you've got to build that because, you know, I've always been known as I've never met a stranger, okay? Also, some people said I'm TMI, too much information, because what you see is what you get. So I try to teach, watch that, your environment. 
maybe I would have done better over the years by watching out, making sure I know my audience around me, speak less, be careful. I think that self-awareness is not spoken enough, is not taught enough, is not brought out enough, and that really connects with humility. It also connects with you know, your brand, developing your brand, and really ties right into perceptions reality because it's, you know, it's, it doesn't matter what you think, it matters what someone else thinks of you. That's what you're developing your brand as. Developing because you're, you want your perception to look good from somebody else. You know what you feel like and, and feel about yourself and you like yourself, but does that other person feel the same way? So you gotta develop it so that the people who matter to you or who impact your career, they see you the way you see yourself. Indeed. And, and actually, one of the things uh, I've heard from a lot of other people, and I think I want to hear your opinion on this because you have a chapter in your book on that, is a lot of times your personal brand is also built by the company that you're working for. And you actually have a chapter that says, choose the right company. So obviously, uh, having spent 35 years with Cook, uh, Cook Medical, you've chosen the right company. But how uh, and why is it important for you to choose the right company uh, if you also need to be building a good personal brand as well? What is the connection there? Well, I mean, okay, okay, there's three facets of this. Within your personal brand, there are three things happen. You have a company recognition, you have the industry recognition, and you have the customer recognition. So that's what's built within your brand. Now, me personally, uh, I believe the customer recognition is the number one important thing. If you went over the customer, the customers like you, and they buy from you, you win. Number yeah. two. I believe the industry recognition is extremely important because when your colleagues in the industry think you do a good job, wow, that's respect. Indeed. Now, the thing is, unfortunately, the company recognition ends up being extremely important. Why, Deva? Yeah. Because, it, because that's how you get promoted. Yeah. That's how you get a raise. And so, unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, you know, it's, it's a good thing but it's not also always a good thing because perception is reality and you may try your heart out. You may give it all. And someone may not think that you're good enough for this position or you don't deserve a raise and whatever it happens. So you've got it in your mind. You've got to accept it. It's okay. I believe in my heart that if you're serving others and you're serving your customer and you're serving your colleagues in the industry and you're getting that kind of respect, you know, sometimes you don't get all three. Yeah. You know? believe that the importance is the other but I'm not gonna throw it away the, yeah. the bath water because a company recognition is important you want to be with a company that you enjoy the rest of your life and you understand that they're not perfect mm -hmm. it's all said and done the dust settles I want to be recognized by my peers you know by my industry colleagues and I want to be recognized by that by the customer any anytime it's fantastic because one of the things I'm going to actually make a note is in my copy of the book is that under the company, I'm going to put it within kind of inverted quotes because the company is the company you keep, be it with your own organization. But from what you just said, it's also keeping the right company with the right kind of customers, but also keeping company with the right kind of peers. So essentially company is just not the company you work for. It's a company that you keep and the company that is your reference list where you want to be well known. I think that's, very, very interesting because you said something which I think is fantastic. So you talked about the fact that a lot of times choosing the company, working with your own organization, it can be a mixed bag. So my point is that brings me to the la one of the last chapters that you have in your book where you talk about have a good work-life balance because there are times that you might question, hey, did we do the right thing? Spending so much time and effort into one organization and you might not get the kind of recognition that you want. So tell us a little bit more about this concept of work family balance, because you sort of alluded to, uh, to this early in the, in the, in the interview where you talked about one of your passions is, is your family. So tell us a little bit more about this. Well, believe me, Deva, it took me a long time to understand work life balance. And I, and I talk about it in the book about phases. There's phase one, two, three, and four. Phase one is when you just start out and you're excited and you're trying to learn your craft. And you've got to put 150% into this. 
You can't go 50-50. The day doesn't end at five o'clock on Friday. You go through that period of time, whether that's three years or four years, you become better at what you do. Then that's their phase two, or maybe you go off and get an MBA and you take on other projects and you're starting to be able to bring your personal life back in a little bit, you know, where you can do other things. So you go through phase three when you're hot stuff you know your stuff you can conduct business from a distance don't always have to be there in person you know then that's when you start crafting and, and coordinating your work life around your personal life where you can do things with your children and as they're growing up and you spend more time with your family then i think it's either phase four or phase five i can't remember where you're back where i'm at right now where you're an empty nester so you can kind of go back to phase one where you've got time now yeah. Go in and you can invest in something different. But I think the key is, the whole key, and I said this the other day, I was speaking at somewhere that I said, the key to that phase one, when you're driving yourself crazy and you got 150% in there and that's all you're doing, you're 24 seven, you're a workaholic, is you've got to have a good support team behind you. Whether or not it's a partner, a friend, a mother, father, a spouse, a significant other, when you have that kind of support who pushes you out the door and says, go, go, go do your thing, build your career, be successful, I will be here when you come back, then it makes it very easier. So I believe that is okay, work-life balance. But then you grow into other phases where you uh, understand more that it's all about your family when it's all said and done. No one's going to care what company you work for someday or worked with. So as I say, work with, not for. What they're going to care about with you, a good friend, a good father, a good yeah. husband, um, you know, a good wife, good f whatever it is, that's what's really, really important. And, would you, and did you treat people with respect? And did you treat people with humility? And for me, that's kind of full circle. It begins with your forward where you talk about find your passion. And I think if you find the right passion, but you also do it well with the right kind of humility, building the right kind of networks, and never forgetting that it's all about making that work family balance that eventually you're able to achieve all the things that you have been able to achieve that others can as well. So once again, uh, Chip, thank you so much for your time. A lot of, uh, for the audience, there's a lot of information available at www.chiphelm.com, uh, especially the chapter on personal branding where uh, you can actually uh, download an audio file and listen to an audio file about personal branding for free uh, but again the book is available it's bigger than sales and this is available uh, on amazon uh, and again chip thank you so much for your time and i look forward to having you in our classes going forward as well i appreciate it i really enjoyed coming to ball state you guys are wonderful yeah, thank you